I asked you a question uh, earlier today, and I said, are you ready? And I told you, ask your neighbor, are you ready? And tonight, for a little bit, I want to talk about, are you ready for what is next? Amen. Tell your neighbor, are you ready for what's next? Amen. Amen. That's it. That's it, Brother Lewis. Amen. Ask someone else, are you ready for what's next? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to go directly to the Word of God. And if you can find uh, in your Bibles, amen, in the book of, um, excuse me, I just drew a blank. The first, the first Corinthians. Turn your Bibles to First Corinthians, please. Hallelujah. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. We're going to start reading there, and then we're going to flip over to Acts chapter 1 through 4. Amen. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9, it says, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Amen. Verse number 10 says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Amen. If you can turn in your Bibles to one more scripture here tonight in Acts chapter 1 and verse number 4. Acts chapter 1, verse number 4. It says, and being assembled together with them. This is Jesus talking or Jesus being together with the disciples. It says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Wait for the promise of the Father. Amen. As you put your Bibles down, amen, let's get into a prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for the moving of your spirit, for all that you are going to do tonight. I ask that you would allow the power, the liberty of the Holy Ghost to be in this place, that you would lead, direct, and guide us by your word, O oh Lord, and that we would render praise and thanksgiving and expectancy unto you, for you are the creator of all things, and that you would deliver the mighty miracles that you want to render into this place, and we will surrender praise and thanksgiving unto you. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise and a heartfelt thanksgiving unto your heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. I do want to make mention tonight, amen, that we are poised in position for something great. Tell your neighbor, I'm ready for something great. Amen. As we look Amen. At the life of Moses. And as we look at the life of Moses, we find that Moses was a great leader in the Old Testament. I want you to follow me here for a little journey. But Moses was a great leader in the Old Testament. Amen. He was born there and in a time of very much oppression by the Egyptian rule that was over that area of the world at that time. He was born into slavery. And Moses at this time was born into slavery at a time where they were killing all the young babies that were being delivered by the Israelites. Every time an Israelite woman or, or, or mother would give birth uh, to a male, they would go and kill these male babies because they were felt that they were going to be overpopulated by the Israelites and the Egyptian government was feeling threatened by the populous numbers of the Israelites. And so they would go and kill these babies. The Bible says that as Moses was born, his mother hid him for three months. Hid him there in the house so that they would not kill her baby. Hid him there in the house. He would hide his crying and hide uh, his little whimperings that he would give up uh, as a little baby Moses. Uh, so it was a very difficult time in which Moses was born in. Uh, it was not a time, uh, or Moses' uh, life at this time uh, was not in riches. It was not in the palace of the Egyptians. It was not learning from the Egyptian scholars and the Egyptian uh, mathematicians. Uh, at this time... Uh, Moses was a slave and a slave that was intended to be killed. And the Bible says that after three months, 
his mother could no longer hide him for she had to allow him to be put in a little basket and and as she constructed this small basket and she pitched it with tar upon the outside of the basket she sent it down the river and with all her intentions and purposes she was praying that maybe by some chance someone would save this child but she can no longer hide this baby and I want to come and talk to you and just pause for a few moments there in that story. And I want to let you know that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And maybe you have been born into this Christian walk uh, at a time of your life where you feel much oppression and much distraction and like there's a lot of pressure upon your life uh, where God seems very distant uh, but you have a hunger for God and you know that God has a purpose in your life uh, can I tell you that God always has a plan for your life he always has a purpose uh, for your life. Uh, you are not in the situation that you are in by accidents or by circumstance alone. Uh, but God is sending a boat your way. God is sending a savior your way. And you may have been born into slavery. But you're about to be born again uh, into a mighty kingdom. Uh, into a mighty royalty that God has specifically prepared for you. Tell your neighbor, I'm royalty. Tell the other neighbor, I don't look like it, but I'm royalty. Amen. The other neighbor shouldn't confirm with you. Hallelujah. Amen. But you are royalty. The Bible says that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you've been set apart for his kingdom. And so you can tell your past that it needs a detach. You can tell your future to get ready. And you can tell your present situation, I'm here and I'm here to stay by the glory and the God. God of Almighty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses was born into slavery. But just because he was born into slavery does not mean that he was meant to be bound by slavery. And I want to tell some of you today that just because you were born into generational curses does not mean that you are to be bound by generational curses. You're not supposed to be bound by the things of this world or by the pride of life or by the lust of the flesh. But God has made in you a new creature through Christ Jesus our Lord. So you are now born again into the royalty and the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And just because, amen, that Moses was born into slavery does not mean he was bound to slavery. And I want to also make mention today that when you have a calling upon your life and an anointing upon your life, it does not mean that that anointing is going to manifest right away. How many know that they are called of God? Amen. How many know that I got an anointing on my life? Amen. Well, now's a good time to give God glory and praise for that uh, because you've just acknowledged between heaven and hell that I'm called by God and I got an anointing on my life uh, and I'm not going to allow the slave mentality to confiscate uh, my anointing uh, perception uh, and my calling uh, that is upon my life. Hallelujah. 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 And when something is anointed, no matter how the devil tries to kill it, or no matter how the devil tries to snuff it out, and no matter how the devil tries to hide it and to overshadow it with darkness, when somebody is anointed, when a child of God is anointed, you cannot hide that anointing. You cannot hide the light that is illuminating upon them. Moses could no longer be hid anymore because he had to get on the road to his destiny he had to get on the road to what God wanted to do in his life and I want to remind somebody here tonight that if you are anointed and you are called of God the enemy cannot hide your anointing the enemy cannot confiscate the power of God that is working up and welling up within you because God's got a plan God God's got a purpose for that anointing and I am on the road. I am getting ready for what is next. Yeah. 
It was the will of God that Moses was placed in the basket and sent down the river. It was the will of God that he would come across the princess and the royalty of Egypt. It was the will of God that he would be raised up in the palace of Pharaoh. And it was the will of God that he would be taught and instructed by the carnal things of this world in order to prepare him for the mighty exodus that God was going to use him for to bring out his people out of bondage and into his marvelous life. And can I tell you here today that it is the will of God for you not to be hid anymore. It is the will of God for you to go through the pressures. It is the will of God for you to go through the heartache and some of the heartbreak that you may be facing. It is the will of God for you to go through some of the tests and trials so you can have a testimony. It is the will of God for you to get into a place where you have to fall down on your knees and pray to a heavenly God because he is molding and shaping you as the one. So so that you can come back with the mighty testimony to pull out the hundreds and to pull out the thousands because your anointing cannot be hid. And you must get ready for what is next. Moses in this instance and in the Bible we did not know that God had an almighty plan and was going to perform it in the way and in the manner in which God was performing it in Moses had no idea that he was being prepared and he was being taught by the most intellect and by the most intelligent of that time because God had a purpose for him Moses did not realize brother Peter and brother uh, brother Esteban that God was teaching him through the through the instruments of the Egyptians how to read measurements and how to make mathematic mathematic mathemat that right there amen hallelujah i'm not educated hallelujah but moses didn't realize that he was learning that for a purpose because God was going to use that uh, so he can measure the articles of the tabernacle. Uh, so he can measure the place in the house of God. Uh, so he can make it to specific directions uh, and instructions. Uh, see, God was using what he was learning right now uh, for the ultimate plan uh, of his coming uh, over there. Uh, he was getting him ready for what was next. Can I remind some of you today uh, that you're learning some things in the valley. Uh, you're learning some things in the battle. Uh, you're learning some things in the struggle. Uh, because God is getting ready uh, for what is next in your life. Why don't you give God a praise for that? Uh, he's getting me ready. He's getting me prepared. Uh, he's getting me in line uh, for what is next. Give God a praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And I appreciate the fact that God always had a plan. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, uh, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Hallelujah. 2 Peter verses, uh, chapter 3, verse 8 and 9 says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, uh, that one day is with the Lord uh, as a thousand years uh, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. He hasn't forgotten what he has promised over your life. He hasn't forgotten the cruise of oil that he has anointed you with. He has not forgotten the extravagant promises that he has based upon your life. For he is faithful. 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 But the Lord is long suffering to us and not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Give God a praise. Give God a praise for that in the name of Jesus. There are 783,100. There are 783,137,000 1 words in the Bible. 23,145 verses. 66 books in the Bible. And can I tell you that in all that content, uh, there is over 3 thousand promises of blessing and prosperity that the Lord has given unto his people. Yeah. 
there is less than 500 curses that he speaks upon his people. I thank God that I serve a positive God. I serve a righteous God who is not looking to condemn me, but is looking to uplift me. Who is not looking to cast me aside, but is looking to gather me in. Who is not looking to throw me into the molly grub blues and to tell me you'll never work. You won't prosper. But I'm looking at a God who says I could fix that. I could use that. I can compose that for my glory. And I'm getting ready for what is next in my life hallelujah 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 the heaven and the references of heaven are are mentioned 582 times in the bible heaven is mentioned 582 times in the bible in the old and in the new testament praise god amen and hell is mentioned less than 50 times in the bible I'm looking and I'm headed to a place uh, that is far greater than this place. Uh, and I thank God that there's a word inside of me uh, that promises uh, that I'm going somewhere better. Uh, the next place that I arrive, uh, the next place that I get to is going to be with my Jesus. Uh, and it is far better than this world and in this earthly domain. <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Going back to Moses. Going back to Moses. Amen. Moses had no idea. Don't excuse those men. Amen. Moses had no idea that the preparation that he was going through and the things that he was experiencing there as he was uh, raised up in the in the palace of Egypt, that God was preparing him for the things that were to come at hand. It was God's plan for him to fall into a mess. It was God's plan for him to go and to kill the Egyptian taskmaster uh, while he was trying to save an Israelite. It was God's plan for him to have to run into the wilderness and sit under the toolage of Jethro and once again have to relearn everything all over again. He was confused and lost and not sure where he was going because he spent 40 years, Brother Frank, he spent 40 years in the Egyptian palace. Imagine 40 years of learning, 40 years of royalty, 40 years of not getting schmutz under your fingernails. 40 years of, of having servants groom you and shave you and, 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 and clean you. <laughs> 40 years of eating only filet mignon and lobster out of the river. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. 40 years of the finest wines. 40 years of the most excellent music of that time. 40 years of, of beautiful pillows to lay on at night. Cali king size beds. Hallelujah. 40 years of, of, of just servants waiting on your hand and feet. And in and, and 40 years that if you met a mistake, ooh. They would just shove it under the carpet. 40 years of that. To have to run into the wilderness and stay in the wilderness for another 40 years. A new 40 years where everything he learned in the palace could not help him in the desert. Every, all the arithmetic, got it right, hallelujah. All the mathematics and arithmetic that he had learned in the palace did not help him in the desert. All the fancy uh, uh, foods and all the fancy recipes that he had partook of and maybe knew how to cook uh, in Egypt uh, could not help him to cook something in the desert. He didn't know how to cover himself up in the desert. He didn't know how to survive when a windstorm came in the desert. He didn't know how to find shelter. He didn't know how to, how to make sandals for his feet. Uh, he, all the rings on his hands and all the gold adornment that he had maybe around his neck and vesture did him no good in the desert he had to once again submit himself under a man and to relearn what to eat in the desert what cactus to pull from how to find water in the desert how to cover up at night and and not get frostbite and cold and how to find green grass for his sheep in the desert he had to learn everything all over again in the desert and i want to talk to somebody here tonight who thinks that you've gone through a lifetime of christianity and a lifetime of preparedness and you've been serving the lord for maybe 15 20 years and you feel 
like it does not help you for this moment and season of life that you are in right now. That it doesn't have nothing to do with where you at in life right now. But can I tell you that God always has a plan? And in his plan, he's getting you ready for what is next. He's getting you ready for what is coming around the corner. Moses, in his wildest imaginations, would have never thought that he was going to go back to Egypt. He would have never thought that, that he was going to have an encounter on a mountaintop at a burning bush. And some of you today are waiting for your burning bush experience. Can I tell you right now that you will never have a burning bush experience until you get ready to climb the mountain and to find God. God's not going to find you. You got to go and look for God. You got to look for him in your trial. You got to look for him in your tribulation. You got to look for him in your mistake. You got to look for him in the hardships of life and say, God, I need you to show me what is next. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel like I hit a nerve in somebody's heart. Would you just give God praise right now? God, you got to show me what's next. You got to show me what I'm supposed to do, where I'm supposed to go, how I'm supposed to step. You got to show me. I can't stay here in the desert no more. I got to know what is next. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Moses, uh, amen, has a burning bush experience. God speaks to him at that burning bush experience. Uh, he is overcome with an overwhelming need to get back to Egypt. He goes back to Egypt and he's faced with the past that he tried to run from. But all the while, God is preparing him. God is getting him ready and tonight god has prepared us word of flame god is getting us ready for something great god is getting us ready for the next chapter the next book to be written the next generation to come in and to take this thing to a whole new level god is getting us ready to rise up young men and young ladies to bring them to the place in which god can place a special anointing upon them and they can be used and they can be groomed for the great and mighty things that he has prepared god is getting word of flame ready for the elders and for the ones that have been here a long time to impart wisdom and to impart knowledge and to go and see the mighty harvest take place that you have been promised you better get ready for what is next hallelujah hallelujah moses goes to the agenda and i'm running through this story you should know this story guys Amen. I pray you know. Hallelujah. If no, go and read the book of Exodus. Praise God. Amen. Amen. But, but God, or Moses goes and endued with the power of God's spirit and presence upon him. I believe that Moses follows the instructions of the Lord and goes. And we know the ten plagues that took place there in Egypt. And before the last plague took place, Moses gives instructions to the Israelites and tells them tonight is the night tonight is the hour tonight we're getting out of here put your sandals on get your staff in your hand make sure that you got your children with you make sure that you have prepared and eaten a meal that I've given you instructions on how to eat it Make sure that you that, that, that you have the, the donkeys ready and, the, and, the, and, and the, the sheep ready. Make sure you have all of your belongings because we're not leaving nothing behind but the past. What was he telling them? He said, you need to get ready for what we're about to do. You need to get ready for the mighty exodus that's about to take place. And I've come to tell Word of Flame today, you get to get your family ready. You better get your kids ready. You better get all your assets and resources ready because we're about to move out of the old dimension into a new dimension. We're about to move out of the bowers and become the mighty, the mighty head and not the tail. We're about to get ready for what is next. And then give God a hand clap of praise. Give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And there is something that has been taking place in the atmosphere and something that has been shifting. And I want you to now reflect upon your life and think about what God has allowed you to go through over these last several months. And, and maybe this last year, uh, some of you have had some serious ups in this last year where God has done some amazing things. While others uh, have had some serious struggles in this last year from where God has had to pull you through almost by the by the caller to saying, come on, son, come on, daughter, you can make it. But whatever area of your life uh, you feel that you are in right now, whatever season of life that you feel that you are a part of right now, know that it has been God ordained uh, and it is all working together for the good of them that are called according to his purpose. Uh, you have not been abandoned. You have not been left alone. God hasn't kicking you to the side because you have no more talent to give or you have no more energy to give. God is just preparing you. You've been in an incubation process in the desert. You've been in a preparation process in the desert. You've been in a, a process in which God is pulling the strengths out of you, toning your muscles, engineering your mind, and composing you to be the great and mighty man of God that he has destined for you. You are not a has-been, but you are about to be something that God and heaven is intended for this world in this time and generation. I want you to get this right here. I want you to get this. Everything, everything that is inspired or transpired in your life, God will use it for his glory. Everything that has gone on in your life, God will turn it around and use it for his glory. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in that one. Maybe I need to tell somebody or remind somebody, amen, that everything that you have faced uh, from your childhood up until now, uh, from your teenage years until now, God's going to use it for his glory. Uh, God's going to use that time where you spent in jail. Uh, God's going to use that time where you felt lonely and desolate. Uh, God's going to use that time where you felt abandoned. Uh, yes, uh, when you were abused. Uh, yes, uh, when you were taken advantage of. Uh, yes, uh, when you were forsaken. God will use it for his glory. If you believe that, can you give God a praise? If you say, God, use it, use it, Lord, use it, God. Use it for your glory. You're getting me ready. You're getting me ready. When I was without, you got me ready. When I didn't have anything in my pocket, you got me ready. When I was all alone and by myself, you were getting me ready. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Everything that you have been through will not be wasted. Every burden and every heartache that you have been through will not be wasted in the kingdom of God. Man, I, I can think of, uh, 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 of the little lad that came to Jesus with five loaves and two fishes. What was that to be able to feed a multitude of thousands? To some, to some of the disciples, that's, that's peanuts. But my God is a multiplier of peanuts, Brother Alex. My God is a multiplier of just a few tortillas and a couple of bowls of ceviche. Hallelujah. My God is a multiplier who can feed the cattle on a thousand hills and then get those cattle to return and bless me and make me prosperity and, and owner over all in the name of Jesus. Because he works like that. Because he's preparing me for something like that. Hallelujah. And everything that Moses had gone through, let me, let, me, let me clarify this, everything that Moses had gone through the first 40 years of his life was getting ready to prepare him for the additional 40 years, the last 40 years of his life. For the next 40 years, all those leadership skills that he learned in, in, in the Egyptian palace, Brother, Brother Lewis, all those arithmetic and all those learned science skills that he learned in the palace the first 40 years. Now he was able to be able to, to get up and stand up as a leader amongst the people of Israel to get them organized and to get them collected together to use the intellectual part of his mind to bring them as a unified unit to lead them out of Egypt. How do you do that? How does one man lead a million people out of somewhere? 
It's because God was preparing him. God was getting him ready. God was setting him in line. You think that some of your bosses are, are, are have you under the gun and hand you under pressure for, a, for no reason? God is using that man to teach you, to train you, to equip you. God is using that job to get you ready so that you can be able to step out into the miraculous promise that he is prepared for you. He's getting you ready. The first 40 years, uh, we're preparing Moses for the final 40 years. And now he's in the desert with a whole bunch of people. All of a sudden, bling, the light bulb turns on. More like a floodlight. Pass. Amen. Some HID bulbs. Pass. And Brother Peter's truck. Just wow. Amen. The light bulb, the brights turn on. And all of a sudden, while he is in the desert as an 80-year-old man, all of a sudden, all the knowledge he learned from Jethro. See, see, the, the children of Israel didn't know how to survive in a desert. They've always survived in the city of Egypt. And one of the great wonders of Egypt and the great wonders of the world in a city, in a metropolis. The, the children of Israel didn't know how to find water. They didn't know how to clothe themselves. They didn't know how to protect themselves from a dust storm. They didn't know what plants to eat, which cactus to eat, what, what to partake of. But Moses, because he had been there already, knew how to teach them, how to train them, how to prepare them to survive in the desert while they were on their way to a promised land. You see, you see, he was just getting Moses ready for the enormous job that he had prepared for him. And some of you, I remind you again right now that God is just getting you ready. He's just getting you ready for the more enormous responsibility. How are you going to be a leader over hundreds? How are you going to be a leader over tens and twenties? How are you going to be a leader over thousands word of flame? If you don't go through a little trial and you don't go through a little hardship and you don't face a little fire. But when you come out on the other side of that fire, when you come out on the other side of that trial, you can say he's just getting me ready for what is next. <laughs> And I just want to continue to encourage you that God has something prepared. God has something next in your life. I come to tell all your doubts. I've come to tell all your fears that think that you're washed up. Sister Wendy, God's got something for you next. Sister Maria, God's got something for you next. Can I tell you, Brother Israel, God's getting you ready for what is next. Oh, give God a praise. Give God a praise. I come to tell somebody that feels condemned and feels like they just were in sin last night or in sin this morning before they got here that God is just getting you ready. God is just waiting for you to call out to him to find that mountaintop experience so he can align the situations in your life so he can take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it around for his glory because he wants to prepare you for what is next. Are you ready? for what is next hallelujah glory to god hallelujah amen and preparing moses for what is next amen the lord had to continue to constantly remind the children of israel that you're not in this wilderness by coincidence but he was training the children of israel how to have church he was training the children of Israel how to build a house for him. He was training the children of Israel how to worship him. He was training the children of Israel how to offer up sacrifices, how to be thankful unto a holy God, and how to be grateful for all that the Lord has done and is doing in their life. He could not just walk them into the, uh, the promised land without first showing them and training them and equipping them in the desert. 
And just want to remind you again here tonight, uh, God's got a plan for your life. Uh, He's got a call for your ministry. Uh, He's got an ordained deal going on. uh, And he has not left you there just so you can go walk around with your hands uh, in your pockets uh, and feel desolate. Uh, But God wants you to know, uh, I'm training you. My hand is on you. Uh, My eyes are ever so watchful upon you. Uh, And yes, uh, you will be the borrower and not, or you will be the lender and not the bower you will rise above the issues that you have struggled with and the temptations that have beat you up i am just getting you ready for what is next to happen in your life hallelujah 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah i look at the life of david David was, a, we count David as a wonderful man, a wonderful man full of, of, of the, a servitude in his heart, full of servants and, 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 and uh, just had a servant's attitude throughout his whole life, willing and wanting to do what was that which is righteous before the Lord. And of course, he had his hiccups and his problems, but he always wanted to have the blessing of the Lord over his life we know david and we credit david for writing many uh psalms and hymns and i don't even know if they're all recorded i can imagine that there were some in the in the private collection you ever get that cd it says private collection amen i'm sure there were some in the private collection of david that are not recorded that we don't have that showed intimacy between him and the lord but we accredit david and we sings many psalms of david that has gone on uh in in many of our songs and in many of our worship Amen. And, and, and whenever we're having a bad day, we always think of Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I asked a brother this, this uh, during offering time. I said, bro, are you hungry? I told him, bro, are you hungry? He said, yeah, I'm hungry. I want Brother George to come up here real quick because he told me he was hungry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I hunger still, <laughs> Man, I want you to sit down right here, Brother George, at this nice turkey dinner. Candlelight. <laughs> don't, don't dig in yet. Just, just get ready. All right, Brother George, you just get ready. Okay? You get ready, Brother George, for what is next, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And so the life of David, and, and we look at the life of David, and, and, and we find that he is just wanting to be a servant in the Lord's house. And, and if we really look at the life of David, we always find him transitioning from one season to the next season. Always transitioning from a shepherd to, to a warrior, and from a warrior to a, a mighty leader in general, and from, from a mighty leader in general to a fugitive, and from a fugitive to a king, and just always in transition in his life, uh, and because he was always getting prepared for what was next. Matter of fact, I credit David because David prepared. He asked God, God, let me build you a house. Let me build you a wonderful place of worship. And the Lord said, no, David, you can't. You you have too much blood on your hands. But you can prepare for what is next. You can prepare for what is next. And I want to encourage some elders here today. You may not have the strength. You may not have the endurance like you used to have. You may have more gray hairs that are white than gray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But you can prepare the next generation for what is next. You can prepare the young ones here, these young people and these children for what is next. Because I know without a shadow of a doubt that that God is poised in position to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a mighty revival upon this church and upon this this next chapter and generations that are here to come. Brother George, are you ready for what is next? Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. And, 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 and we look again at, this, at the story now of Jesus. And we look at Jesus. And Jesus was in constant preparation. Constantly training the people and teaching the people on the hillsides. And teaching them uh, in, in, by the synagogues and in the cities. Uh, trying to prepare them for what was next to come. Getting them ready for the temple to be destroyed but god would rise it up again in three days 
Getting them ready for the ultimate sacrifice uh, that was going to take place on Mount Golgotha and the, uh, uh, the inevitable death that he was going to incur on the cross. Uh, he was trying to get ready the disciples uh, for the next chapter that was to come uh, for the establishment of churches uh, and the establishment of a God, a great and mighty work uh, that was about to be poured out after his death. Uh, he was trying to get the world ready for what was next. He was trying to get the churches. Uh, amen. After, after he died and rose again, uh, he told his disciples, get ready for the promise that is to come. Get ready for the thing that I'm going to impart and pour out upon you. In Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, it says, but ye shall receive after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Amen. And he tells them, starts to describe to them all the many areas that, he, that they were going to be witnesses to. And he is positioning them to get ready for what is next. We find as we go forward in the book of Acts uh, that mighty revival is poured out. That mighty influx of souls come in. The Bible says that the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. He was going ahead and preparing them and working them and admonishing them and teaching them because he knew what was coming next. 5,000 over here, 3,000 over there, hundreds over here. Churches started to rise up in Ephesus and churches started to rise up in Rome and then in Corinth and Laodicea and, and, and all these areas started to rise up with churches. And Brother George, are you ready for what is next? Man. And churches started to rise up everywhere, but immediately darkness fell upon the church. Persecution fell upon the church. And I want to tell you today that you cannot enjoy success without struggle. You cannot enjoy accomplishment without sacrifice. And I can get you all hyped up and excited that God is going to do this and God is going to do that. But I must remind you that are you ready also to fight? Are you also ready to stand up upon the rock Christ Jesus? Are you also ready to be ridiculed for his namesake? Are you ready to put on the armor of salvation? Are you ready to wave the banner of Jesus Christ when everybody around you is trying to pull it down? Are you ready to proclaim that you are a one God apostolic? Like, uh, when everyone else wants a hyper grace salvation are you ready for what is next it would be foolish for me to broadcast all about heaven without telling you that there is a hell Without reminding you that some of us who are destined for greatness the enemy also has a plan for us destined for failure but in the almighty power of, all, of God Almighty, he has went ahead and took the highlighter, if I, if I would, or the, or the big eraser. And he is wiping away your past so it does not govern your future. He is wiping away the things that held you bound before so it does not inhibit you from being released into the promises that God has for you now and in the future. God is getting you ready for what is next brother george are you ready then why are you not partaking then why don't you have a fork in your hand why don't you have a knife out there why is a napkin not on, on, on your lap or around your neck ready for you to dig in you better what you better prepare yourself for what is next, people. You better prepare yourself, word of flame, for what's about to happen. You can't just sit there and you can't just wait for it to walk through the door. You got to dig in and you got to get ready. You got to dig in and say, I want this more than ever before. I'm not going to let my food get cold while I'm ready for somebody to serve me or somebody to give it to me. I got to go get it and I am getting ready. For what is next? Can you give God a glorious praise? Yeah. 
I wonder if tonight, if Jesus Christ is sitting across a table for us and he's waiting for us to dig in. He's waiting for us to partake of the blessings. He's waiting for us to take care of the splendor. What do you want to live on Cheerios and tortillas the rest of your life? Or are you ready to dig into the meat of the word of God? Are you ready to dig into the promises and the manna? Are you ready to take your family back? Are you ready to take your ministry back? Are you ready to take your anointing back? Back. Are you ready to take back the city? Are you ready to take back the neighborhoods? Are you ready to take back the government? Are you ready to take back? Because he is getting you ready. Ready for what is next about to happen. Why don't somebody speak in tongues right now as the spirit gives them utterance? Just speak in tongues. God, get me ready. Get me ready. Get me ready. I'm getting ready, Lord. I'm taking the bib off. I'm, I'm, I'm taking the pity party off. I'm taking the woe is me attitude off. I'm taking the self righteousness off. I'm taking the pride off. No flesh shall glory in your presence. No attitude shall glory in your spirit uh, but i'm gonna get myself in position uh, i got my fork in hand god uh, i got my spoon in the other hand lord uh, lay it on me uh, prepare me oh god uh, set it down before me because i am gonna partake uh, of what is next I'm not waiting for the right message. I'm not waiting for pastor to come back from the Philippines. I'm not waiting for the next evangelist. I ain't waiting for Exodus conference. I'm getting ready right now. I'm getting prepared right now for what is next. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting ready for the souls. I'm getting ready for the backsliders. I'm getting ready for the hungry. I'm getting ready for baptism Sunday. I'm getting ready for baby dedication Sunday. I'm getting ready for discipleship class part three. I'm getting ready for what is next. I'm getting ready to knock down a wall to make room for a children's ministry. I'm getting ready to move out a Spanish room and get into the fellowship hall. I'm getting ready to go to two services on a Sunday because we can't fit them in the building. I'm getting ready. It's going to happen, word of flame. It's going to happen, word of flame. It's going to happen, brother. It's going to happen, sister. And are you ready? Are you prepared for what is next? I would tonight uh, that we would not stand idly by and watch the season go by uh, and watch the door of opportunity close on by uh, because we weren't ready. Uh, I would that it would convict us in our heart uh, that we would not watch uh, the windows of heaven shut up uh, because we were shut up uh, and watch the doors of heaven close up because we were closed up. And we weren't ready for what was next. I feel the convicting power of the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. I put my problems aside. I put my disputes aside. I put the things that have been fighting me at home aside. I put myself, my flesh, and my personal wants and ambitions aside, oh God. I put the things that have been tormenting my mind aside. I put the besetting sins that I've been dabbling with aside, oh Lord. I put the areas of me that no one knows about that are filled with darkness and corruption. I put them aside because I gotta get ready I gotta get prepared for what is next to come amen put up Psalms 23 verse number 3 please I want you to pay attention Sister Keisha if you can come please but the George are you full yet <laughs> You're not supposed to be. 
Actually, I'm going to expound on that. Praise God. Hallelujah. There are some times that we can come to church and just get a little bit of blessing, a little bit of nourishment, and think that's going to last us the whole week. But that's not enough. You need to consume the whole plate. You got to eat every little thing that the man of God and the word of God is being preached to you. Even if you don't like it, even if it feels like you're full enough, you got to get it all and eat it all because it's going to prepare you. It is going to sustain you for what is next hallelujah thank you hallelujah psalms 23 says he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake keep going verse number four it says yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death you thought about that not through the valley of the shadow of evil. Right, right, right. Not through the valley of the shadow of darkness. There's an enemy that wants to kill you, Sister Flora. There's an enemy that wants to kill you. Kill you, Sister Trish. He wants to kill you. He wants to get your past and cause it to literally choke the living life out of you. And it's constantly overshadowing your life. The shadow of death. What is the shadow of death? Sin. The shadow of sin is overshadowing your life. And you got to walk through it. You got to go through it. It says, yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, your past sin, your past hangups, maybe your present hangups, your present sins, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Can I remind you that the Lord might not be there in your sin, but he is there to pull you out of your sin. He's not going to go to the, to the crack house and partake of the crack with you. I know nobody smokes crack no more, but it's just an expression. <laughs> He's not going to go, amen, and, and, and log on to the internet and to those pornographic sites with you. He's just not. He's not going to go into, those, in, into the bar or into the club or into your homie's house or your, your friend's house or your family member's house where you know they're drinking and you're going to partake too. You know what's going to happen. He's not going to go. But he will be there as a patient, saving father, willing to pull you out of that sin that you are in. He will not be there in the sin with you, but he will definitely pull you out of the sin. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I'm just going to slip this in real quick. The rod of the shepherd and the staff of the shepherd, the, the, the rod was there. It says the rod and thy staff. Right? It says both. I mean, put it back up real quick. Verse number four. Right? This is Bible study time. But thy rod and thy staff. The rod was there to correct. And the staff was there to rescue. The, the, the shepherd would get the rod and, and, and it hit the little sheep if it was going to an area. Maybe even break the leg of the little sheep if it was going somewhere it shouldn't go. But the staff was also there with that hook to gather the sheep in. To bring him in close. You need a pastor in your life. You cannot do this thing without a pastor. You cannot do this thing without a shepherd. You got to have a man of God. And you got to take heed to his rod. And to his staff. You can't just listen to the staff. When it's convenient for you. Without partaking of the rod of chastisement. When it's necessary for you. You must have both. In your life. Hallelujah. Both the rod and the staff comfort me. They don't just hurt me. They both comfort me. Next verse. Hallelujah. How you doing? Amen. This is my favorite verse in that whole segment. It says, Thou preparest the table before me. Brother George, I didn't know who I was preparing this table for today. And I asked God for a special person. And so today... Lord prepared this table for you. He set all this up for you. 
says, Thou preparest a table before me. And we rejoice over that. Man, God, you prepared a table before me. That's so awesome. That's so amazing. Where did he prepare that table at? In the presence of my enemies. Brother George, in order for you to get to this table, bro, you had to go through the valley of the shadow of death. You had to get chastised by the man of God. You had to get corrected sometimes, reined in some other times, come and confess other times. But in that time, God was preparing. He was getting you ready to sit at the table, preparing a table before you. Where? In the presence of your enemies. So that your mockers and your scoffers would have more material <laughs> in their books. So that your haters and those that would speak negative against you, those that told you it's never going to work, it's not going to turn around, it's not going to come to pass. For those that would tell you you'll never be restored, you washed up, you washed out, you failed, you did the unthinkable, you're no longer any good. God said, I'm preparing a table before you right there in the presence of your enemies. In the presence of your enemies. And some of you, word of flame, are at a place right now where you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Can I encourage you? Keep on walking, Brother Frankie. Keep on walking, Brother Sonny. Keep on walking, Brother Estrada. God is pairing a table before you. He's setting out the china. He's lighting the candles. He is preparing the meal. And your enemies can't touch you when you're at the table that God has prepared for you. You're barely making it to the table. You're barely struggling to catch your seat at the table. But at the table, there is strength. At the table, there is warmth. At the table, there is peace. At the table, there is joy. You just got to get through the valley. You just got to get cold. Go keep coming from the areas in which the enemy is persecuting you. I just give God a praise. Welcome the presence of the Lord in this place right now. There's tables being set up right now. Oh my God, there is tables being set up right now. There is tables being set up. The Lord is setting up tables. The Lord is setting up tables some, to some of you. sometimes it's it's literally more than you can consume you see God doesn't just doesn't do a little bit of a miracle God just doesn't do a little bit of a miracle he does a complete miracle and God hasn't just prepared you for one moment but he is preparing you for an arrangement of moments in your life getting you and setting you in order getting you ready because he has made you a conqueror and not a conquered. I said he has made you a conqueror and not a conquered. You will not be conquered by the enemy after that you sit at the table and you've got some instructions from the Lord. Can I tell you that at this table, God's going to impart some things into you. It's just not to fill your belly and it's just not to stroke your ego and it's just not to tell you, hey, you're going to make it, but it's to impart some things into you. You ate of the meat of the word of God. You partook of the bread of life. You partook of the things that God has been wanting to instill and deposit on you and it's just not so it could taste good upon your mouth, but it is so it can get in your belly and get into your heart it is so it can bring nourishment to the spiritual arms to be able to uphold the banners of christ and to lift up behold the word of god and the sword of the spirit it so it can be able to strengthen the mind that you can be prepared to put on the mind of christ it's so that what you put in your belly can strengthen those feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace can i tell you that while you're sitting here eating at the table he is preparing you for what is next. And then he says, Thou anointest my head with oil. <laughs> you see, I had to eat the word of God before I could become anointed. I had to allow the rod and the staff to correct me, Brother George, before I can become anointed. 
I had to go through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, Brother Jarvis, so I can get anointed. I had to go through those trials. I had to go through. Sister Hilda, you know what I'm talking about. I had to go through those loneliness. I, I had to go to those places of isolation and come to the pastor at different times and say, what do I do? But he was preparing me to anoint me. He was preparing you, some of you, to anoint you. You haven't received the full anointing that God has over your life. You haven't received the full thing that God has prepared for you. He is drawing you and wooing you to come to the table. He is getting everything ready and prepared in your life. Because at this table, different chairs are going to pull up. Family members are going to come around this table. Souls and individuals are going to come around this table. Ministry is going to come around this table. Because you decided to go through the valley of the shadow of death you decided to take the correction of the rod and the encouragement of the staff and to eat all that was prepared for you at the table and now 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 your head could be anointed with fresh oil now you could be anointed to where your cup runneth over now you can do the apostolic ministry in which god is calling you to do because you got prepared because you got ready for what is next and I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I want you to come to this altar right now. I want you to come to this altar right now speaking in tongues uh, and just allowing God to examine you, to minister through you right now. Uh, you're getting ready. God's got you in preparation, Brother Peter. God's got you ready for what is next. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, he's just setting you up. Sister Keisha, he's setting you up. He's setting you up for what is...